Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna use one of the workstations in our lab. I'm gonna use 2v1. But it should work anywhere as long as you have Dask and the various things I'm going to use installed. But you can obviously use other packages. But so I'm gonna use virtual environment I made. And it's just got ME analysis and Datrian and the things we've already talked about, as well as NumPy, Pandas, and obviously Desk. So first sorry, and foremost, can you make this bigger, please? Oh, sorry. How's that? Better. Okay. So before I tell you what Dask is, I'm going to talk about why we use Dask. So pretty much everyone who uses Python uses NumPy and Pandas. Those are sort of the big um, objects we use to store our data. So as you know, we use NumPy arrays and Pandas data frames most often, but most both are limited to living or to living in memory data. So data has to live in memory to use it. And you also are mostly limited to using a single port, which will slow down any kind of processing you want to do. So Dask attempts to solve that. It's got multiple sub-libraries and collections that tend to avoid these problems by letting you use data that's larger than your available memory, so larger than memory data, and use multiple cores. We're going to import that. And then there are two ways, sort of, to interact with Dask at a higher level or at a lower level. So the high level is where we get these collections that sort of mimic Python objects and libraries. So we have Dask, oh that's awful, Dask array, Dask.array, dot which sort of acts like NumPy, it has a, most of the NumPy attributes and features. And then similarly we have Dask.dataframe, which is like Python, and then Dask.bag, which is the mixed bag of pretty much everything else. And then at the low level, this is the dynamic task scheduling level. So this is where you set up your own schedulers. And you can use what is called distributed to set up or to feed your jobs to the schedulers to run in parallel. So we're going to start at the low level with Dask distributed. So first we need our data, and we're going to use Datrient for that because it gives you collections of things that you can then run on. So I set up this be empty. It's not empty. Okay. Okay. So we've got this empty directory where we can put our data. So let's take some random PDB codes, whatever. And say we want this function is going to just make a directory with the PDB ID name and put the PDB file inside of it. So we're using MD analysis for that. And then so we can run it on just one, and we see we get just one. But imagine if we had like 60,000 of those, which is something I've personally experienced. You don't want to wait for that for you. So you can use Dask, and it'll be nice and fast. So we're going to use distributed's client. Yeah. And that happened when we got the development version. Did you install distributed? No, you told me not to. Oh. Not, oh. Uh, <laughs> not, right. not before Dask. So like uh, you might caught, I'm working in the uh, development just version of Dask. To, just a quick, oh. so there might be something that you have to install distributed with sort of all no, it's afterwards. Fine. It's fine. That's Sorry. fine? Okay. Okay. So I'm using the development version of Dask, which, so you can do everything except for the thing I will point out later in the current release version of Dask, but it will also work in the development version if you install everything correctly, which I didn't. 
So this is what the client looks like. So it needs a cluster, which is also known as a scheduler, and it's going to, as you can see, I'm going to put it there. So that is where we will send our jobs. So, okay, I'm in the right environment. So we DAS scheduler, and then we want to look at what it needs. We need, namely, a host and a port, so where to put it. And I'm going to put it on this machine, port 8789, just out of habit. And then we also need to give that scheduler some workers. So a couple things we're going to give it. We're going to tell it how many processes, how many threads for each process, and then also the location of our scheduler. How many does 2 want to take? 22. And then we're going to give it one thread each. 2 one 8789. Okay. So now... We have our scheduler and our workers attached to that scheduler. So we can feed that to our client and then if we run restart, it'll give us some information about our cluster. So we have 20 workers, 20 cores, 33 gigabytes total. And then we can then map our get PDBs function onto our list of objects, our PDB IDs. And then if we want to look at that, they're all pending so we can see how many, they're finished in that amount of time, they're very fast because there are only six of them, but again, you could have 60,000. And now we've got all of them. Okay, so that's the low level stuff where you just want to run something really simple, really fast. So, comes in handy. All right, now we're going to look at the NumPy sort of mimic library collection, uh, dask.array. So, as they say, Jasper Array so provides. Can I fix yes. it on, on this simple thing? So, does this mean you, you just need something that you can package as a function and then you can farm it out to your workers? Or what is so sort of the general structure of using that? It takes a function. So, I just gave it this really short get PDBs function. And then it takes anything it could iterate over. So, we could do datrian.discover that data home directory. So originally we gave it a list. So now we've got a collection of treants. If you saw David's talk, don't remember. So if we define a function that takes a treant and it just ret or returns the treant name. Because why not? We can then map that function onto our collection of treants. That was really fast because I just printed the name. Return the name. So it takes anything you can iterate over. So an iterable. So now how do I get the names? Uh, dot gather. So you're going to use your client name, dot gather, and then it's important to assign that to a variable. So I could just do this, and it would work fine, but I wouldn't be able to collect them at the end. Anything else on distributed? Any questions? No? Okay. So, and you can not only use a single workstation, but you can yes. put so workers on all Let's say we did have 60,000. Um, I say that number because I do have 60,000 in other cases. So let's say we wanted more than 20 cores. So I'm going to log in me, I'm solo. And I'm going to work on the same virtual environment. And then I want to give the more workers to my scheduler that's on 2v1 from Yamsolo. So how many processes is Yamsolo? Six. Six. 
and threads. Again, we're going to give it one, and then we just have to tell it to be one. And now we have six more on here. So we can do CL.restart. And now we have 26 workers on 26 cores. Would you be able to do this on like Agave? Or would, <coughs> would it be difficult to get the workers assigned to cores there? Would you have to do it for an interactive session? It's Agave. <laughs> The, the supercomputer. Oh. Um, Are you going to talk about job queue? I'm going to a little bit, yes. Okay. So then that will probably oh, answer your question. Okay. So. Oh, is that with the, is SGE a supercomputer? Or SG, whatever letters? It's a queuing system, so there's one. F so I, I think that's sort of best discussed when you get to, to that part, okay. so. Sorry. All right. So the NumPy mimic collection is Dask Array. So basically it's supposed to sort of just feed or speed up any sort of NumPy array operation you would do. So we need some data again. So let's get a random um, NumPy array. And just a million long, so it's very long. And then we need Dask.Array. And then let's turn that array into a Dask array. So we can use this almost exactly the same as we use an NumPy array. So there's so say we want to take the sum of this million random numbers. The only difference is we could do the NumPy sum and the Dask sum, except the Dask sum computes thousand chunks sums and then sets up the operation. So then what you would do to actually get the sum is you have to use compute. Yeah. I was going to ask what chunks was uh, when oh. you use the from array. Chunks is how much you want to break up the data. Okay. So we're taking... So, so it's based on your memory needs? Mm -hmm. So uh, Dask array uses blocked algorithms, so it breaks up. So instead of taking a sum of just a million numbers all at once, we're going to take a thousand sums, each of a million divided by a thousand, so again a thousand numbers, and then take the sum of that thousand numbers. So it's slightly faster. We didn't give it that part of the job, but yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So it's really simple, just the same as NumPy, we take the mean only difference is you got to use compute to actually get the number. Okay. Very similar situation with dask.data frame. So let's get a random data frame. And then I wrote that to this data.csv file. And then we're going to read that. And we're also going to get the dask version. So we have a data frame and a dask data frame, both containing the same information. So this is our regular pandas uh, data frame. So Dask one. So say we want to take the sum of that again. Because why not? So again, you just have to use compute. And it's about the same time this time. Should have made it bigger. Now it's slower. Make it really big. Okay. I think I made it too big. <laughs> yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's faster. So if you have a really big data frame, then it will be faster. If you've got like a medium sized one, just stick to pandas. That's what it does well. Okay, so dask.bag is what we use when we can't use dask array or dask data frame because we don't have something that looks like a numpy array or pandas data frame. Why are you glaring at me? I'm not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at me quite scarily. Yeah, so. 
This is what we use for other Python iterables like lists, dictionaries, and sets. So let's use a sequence because that's a nice Python object. So we're going to make our bag objects, object to see, task sequence, should call it. So let's say we want to find out if the number is odd. So then we can b dot filter is odd, so it'll filter by um, a true false or a function that gives a true false statement or boolean, and then no, oh, we have to compute that of course. So it gives us one three five seven nine dot numbers, nicely. and then we want to square them, and then we can put it all together, which is the fun part. So that's not bad. It's nice for manipulating those odd iterables you have sometimes. And then, so this, you do need the developed version of, of Dask. So this is that, the supercomputer version, I suppose. So it works very similarly. Yeah. So you work on job queuing systems like PBS, Slurm, Moab, and SG. I'm going to use SG because yeah. Wait, what? So you need the development version and then you have to install it by itself. So let's say we want 10 workers, one thread, one process each, and then we're going to give it a time limit of five minutes. We changed one of the keywords, I guess. Casey, you might want to try removing that YAML file if you haven't done that yet. Is that what that is? It could be. Is it there or no? Where is it? It should oh, be with the notebook. Yeah, get rid of that job to that YAML. Or move it as oh. or just it? Oh, well, yeah. Can we? <laughs> I think that your job's going to need 24 weeks. I took from the example they gave, okay? <laughs> All right, so tell it how many cores, how much memory, how many processes you want. Okay. So, so what, then... What so what did it do? So it gave us this cluster, which is basically the same thing as a scheduler. So we can still use, we're going to still use the distributed client. Except instead of this time giving it the address to the scheduler, number 2 one 8789 we're going to give it this cluster object instead, so make sure you name it. So can you do a quick queue start to see, uh, no, in, in the shell, because I mean, what this does is it launches jobs, right? So. But I'm not using 2 one anymore. No, but it puts them on, on, the, on the queue, so I should. <laughs> You say Q start and then pipe it into this so that you can. So see, you have task worker, task worker, mm -hmm. jobs running. Mm -hmm. So these these jobs are now sitting on what well, they're now running on the queuing system. They will be there for five minutes. Okay. So let's say we've already got that list of strings, PDIDs. So. We're just going to convert that into Unicode. 
because you need something to do. And so we map it exactly the same way. Ran really fast, of course. And then at the end, we make sure we stop our workers so that we're not hogging all the stuff. So what happens if you try and submit stuff to a cluster and your workers aren't running um, as a job somewhere? I mean, will they just... So like if I tried to do this now after stopping it? Um, I mean, let's say they're waiting on the queue, so they're queued up, and, but there, there's no resources available for your job. Um, and then you submit whatever functions you want computed. Um, so if it was full and I tried this? Yeah. Yeah. I, I assume that you only, I mean, all that really does it, it starts workers when it can and it adds the workers to the scheduler. So you get whatever the scheduler holds at the moment. So you could effectively just wait. Basically. Yeah, um, there, there are ways to chain. You might want to try adapt. So you can set it so that it'll give you a minimum of, in this example, I did one maximum <coughs> 20 workers depending on what's available and what you're going to need. Okay. Okay. And then there are a couple of libraries that have their own desk dependencies. So MD Analysis, if you all remember, has this PMDA, Parallel Molecular Dynamics Analysis. So it's basically just uses Dask and distributed in a way that it's already optimized for you. And then there's also this Dask ML, so that's two examples. Um, so this is Dask Machine Learning. So it just uses Dask Optimized for Machine Learning. This is actually part of Dask. Yeah. And then if you want to learn about machine learning, come back and listen to Shuchi on the 30th of July. And then, so Clusion, Dask is really awesome and will hopefully make your life easier. And thank you for coming. Next week is uh, Ab Abhishek Singaroy. He's going to tell us about theoretical concerns with molecular dynamics. So, to get it working on agave. Um, is, there like an ag is it named agave cluster or something? Well, it would, so they use slurm. Um, so you use oh. the slurm one, but um, just whether or not it should work. Um, I think if you run your scheduler on the login node and you have an interact and sorry, then you have um. But I don't know. That's not that's not cool. You might get an angry <laughs> email if you do yeah, that. Yeah. So run it on. Run it on interact. In, yeah, you have to run it on interact. So you have to get one core just to run the schedule, probably. Okay. And then. So I have gotten Python's like multiprocessing library on Agave. Okay. But I've never used Dask. So, but you should be able to submit one job for the scheduler. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just takes a core somewhere, mm -hmm. and and then you need to know where it runs. I actually don't know if all the ports are open, so that that the nodes can talk to each other. But I assume they are. They can. We we've, we've had some problems where. We ran into something that had to be run on the same node, but mm -hmm. most things have been fine to be distributed wherever mm -hmm. you can find space. Yeah, I, I would probably run one job for the scheduler and then use that. So. Like a screen, like a screen session and interactive, and that screen session while on the login node, and then run interactive from there, and that should keep it open. Yeah, but why not just run a job? I mean, a batch job that launches the scheduler. Um. And then, because you can tell the scheduler to write all its information to a file, so there's an option for that. Okay. And then you can just read that file. So, I, mean, I, I haven't played around with Slurm cluster or with any customization, but you can, this YAML file that <laughs> you just deleted <laughs> there, basically allows you to customize for whatever resource you're running on. Um, so what would so there was a case where if the array wasn't big enough, then it really wasn't worth using that. Yeah. And do you do you have a, a, an idea of just how many computations really need to be computed, or if just if you know? Um, was that for the array? I remember that happening with the data frame. Uh, yeah, I mean I theoretically it should happen on yeah. both, but. Um, 
Well, this was originally 5,000 and now it's 500,000. So okay. I think around hundreds of thousands is where you need to be for it to really be worth it. Because, okay. um, I mean, it is a little extra work to break everything up in them. Yeah. Okay. So just see what it takes then. But actually, okay. Also, we just took the sum. I imagine there are other things that would be, if you use a different function, it would probably affect that. Did you install the, the um, plotting, the, the graph plotting library so that you can the draw the, the task graph? Wait, install, I did not install any graphing library. Um, but if you have any comp anything that you have, it, it will probably tell you what would be installed. Um, like that 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 yeah, something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, put some parentheses there. Oh. So uh, I think it's just. Yeah. Yeah. Try pip install pi graph this. Pi graph. Yeah, I think it has a pi in front. I can't quite remember. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, try pi graph this again. You, you need the Python bindings too. Here's another one. Uh, okay, uh, well, yeah, fine. fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd make this smaller so we can look at it all in one. Look at this for your sum or for your mean. I think that's for the data frame, right? So, um, did you chunk this at all, or do you have to say chunk I anywhere? I believe it did. Bigger block size would have been better, I think. Oh. <laughs> because now it's trying to draw a graph with what, 5,000 different branches or something? 500 branches. <laughs> or 500? Okay. Is 50 too many? advantage of doing this is that um, until you say compute you just build up um, a graph of what needs to be done and then the scheduler can put all the parts of the graph in different resources so this way it's sort of similar to for instance Google's TensorFlow for machine learning that also builds a task graph and then distributes it sort of, sort of one modern way of doing computation first first decide what you're going to do and then hand it off to an execution environment. I guess 50 is still a lot. I don't know what it's doing. Should I give it a bigger box size? Uh, I would try it with a smaller problem size. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to your original 5,000. Oh, wow. Okay. It's flat. 
that's a, a big, lot. Big. Get rid of that thousand block size, maybe. Or, uh, no, don't get rid of it. Um, oh dear. Uh, what is that making? Why is there so many steps in that? Can you get up? Are we sure that this is the data frame with five with five thousand? Just drop it to fifty. Just <laughs> five thousand to fifty. We'll just and that. Too. Keep it at a thousand. Keep it at the block size at a thousand, and then try. <laughs> Why would that work? Uh, what? See, <laughs> I'm really happy that worked. <laughs> I don't understand. Because you. you <laughs> <laughs> well, you reduce the size of the problem, and then you reduce the. Why? Well, well, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> But clearly now you can see that it's doing things in parallel. Except for here, that's not parallel. Yeah. And each of these parallel branches can be run on a separate worker and then Dask knows how to combine these things. Well, no, it does make sense. Because <laughs> you reduce the block size down, then it's going to create a lot more blocks. But how do you divide 50 by 1,000? I don't know. Well, it's not dividing. Uh, uh, that's by bytes, though. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's by bytes because um. it's a block size. So, it's just saying how much data it's allowed to read in and it done. So. 